Hi, Mario here. Welcome to my channel. Before I start, I want to thank my patrons for supporting my work. Welcome to my new video about magnetic field reversals. Do you also believe that the magnetic field can reverse? We have been questioning what happens to the idea of magnetic reversals if the expanding Earth is left out of all the equations. In this video, I will explain why the theory of magnetic reversals faces some serious and fundamental problems. These are so severe that reversals might even be unlikely close to impossible. In this video, I will explain the ins and outs of magnetic pole reversals and how likely or unlikely it is that such an event will ever occur or has occurred in the past. And I will also explain what happens to the magnetized rock directions when the Earth expands. It would cause exactly the same chaotic patterns that we are seeing geologists debating over, over and over again. The questions concerning the subject of the magnetic field are usually answered like this. The Earth's magnetic field is thought to be generated by fluid motions, convection currents in the liquid outer part of the Earth's core, which is thought to be mainly composed of iron and nickel. The fluid motions are driven by buoyancy forces that develop at the base of the outer core as the Earth slowly cools and iron condenses onto the solid inner core below. Do you get that? What bothers me is how something can condense on something else that is hotter. I have the feeling that the official theories are incorrect and basically violate the laws of thermodynamics. The fact that the magnetic field wanders around does not prove it will flip over. A ship that sways on the waves does not prove it will turn over. Or the fact that a spinning top recesses around does not mean it will turn upside down. We think that these reversal ideas are based on false science. We even dare to claim the field has never reversed, otherwise it would leave expansion marks on the North Pole, and this is not the case. The latter argument will be explained in a future separate video and is linked to the causes of expansion. And this cause leaves such clear marks that if they are not visible on the North Pole, it is the red flag against magnetic pole reversals. When the magnetic field weakens, it does not mean it is on its way to flip over. In fact, we currently witness the North magnetic pole movement making a slight bend and also that its movement towards Russia is slowing down. It is more likely that the pole is simply wobbling around the geographic pole and that its wobbling movement causes a lot of panic once in a while. Flipping over suggests that the core is very agile, but that is not the case. Even when it is fluid, it still requires an enormous and unprecedented amount of energy to reverse. The crust is very light around 0.5% of the weight of the whole Earth, compared to the parts that generate the magnetic field, which is around 30%. The alleged reversals of the magnetic field are registered in the lightest and most agile part of the Earth, in the crust. It is more likely that there is something wrong in the interpretations of the registering process, the so-called paleomagnetic datasets. People are so worried about declining geomagnetic dipole strength. Some believe it is a sign that the field is about to flip. There's no reason to worry about this as well. 
This too is probably not a reason for a field reversal because the field naturally varies. It has been this low before, even lower. Presenting the varying field strength in the wrong way might suggest that there is havoc on the horizon. In graphs, it is presented like this. And so it looks dramatic. In fact, when you present the dipole strength like this, it does not look at all as dramatic as it is often presented. As the weakening is slowing down, the movement is slowing down. The whole paradigm problem starts like this. Geology denies the Earth has expanded, but they do believe that an unobserved phenomenon can change direction without a clearly perceived cause. The paleomagnetic community is already very divided about the latest alleged pole flip, some 720,000 years ago. It is also said that the pole flip is long overdue. What if this event never even took place? Could this be possible? We maintain that a magnetic reversal never happened, and we can even prove this with facts. Magnetic reversals are a paradigm that is ingrained in people's heads. The Earth definitely expands, and if that is denied, it leads to deluding conclusions and thought patterns. But it has become fixed in people's brains as fact. Geology presents pole reversals as established and settled science. However, even when the Earth's expansion is incorrect, the scientific agreement about an exact location of a magnetic pole has always been problematic. In fact, the current data shows that the pole has been around in this area for over the last 200 million years. And because the Earth expands, the uncertainties increase enormously. Also, we see the magnetic pole wandering around, seemingly without a purpose, and there is no geologist who can predict where the current pole is heading to. This unpredictability of the magnetic pole also leaves an abundance of confusing directions in magnetized rock, even when the pole hasn't reversed at all. And we haven't even started to talk about all the other variables. Let us first take a short glance at the theory of pole reversals. Because it is a highly difficult and abstract terrain, I will keep it as short and simple as possible. If you like to dig deeper into this topic, you can download the book of Robert F. Butler called Paleomagnetism, Magnetic Domains to Geologic Terrains. It is one of the best free books available, but it might be difficult to read. The idea is that molten rock that comes to the surface as lava and contain elements like iron and can be magnetized by the magnetic field of the Earth, it will leave traces. When it is magnetized and is still molten, it will direct itself to the magnetic field of the Earth. At least, that is the idea. But because magnets, so to speak, are embedded in this molten syrup, even when the magnetic field varies in direction, the magnets do not so easily go along in the change of direction. And that is only one variable. Secondly, in magnetism there is something that is called hysteresis, a sort of lagging response to a changing field, which increases the risk of incorrect interpretation of direction. Hysteresis is unpredictable. That's another variable. Thirdly, the magnetic field strength also has influence on the degree of reorientation of magnetizable molten rock. That is again another variable. And because geology denies expansion, the theory of field reversals ended up in a minefield of misinterpretations and errors. And that is the fourth variable. The fifth variable is the variation of the pole direction that we witness today. The pole naturally wanders around, leaving confusing traces. The sixth variable is the sample taking and selection process, which is then converted into data, which is then again selected and interpreted. This process introduces many uncertainties as well. Here you see six parameters 
all of which can vary within a large bandwidth. These are the reasons why an alleged ancient magnetic pole can end up in a region that we show here. It is uncertain where the pole actually was when we introduce an expanding Earth as a major parameter in the equations, the area in which the pole could have been becomes much clearer. The accumulation of possibilities adds up to a total amount of variation that far exceeds the 180 degrees of variation, not one time, but many times over the course of Earth's history. In steps, this compass shows the various possibilities where the pole could have been. One, no responsiveness of the magnetic material due to the syrupy nature of magma. Secondly, hysteresis. Thirdly, varying field strength influences reorientation patterns. Fourthly, the Earth expands and so rearranges rock material that geology does not validate. Fifthly, the geomagnetic field changes direction all the time. Sixthly, Sample taking and selection processes are probably the most underestimated cause of errors. The geologists who take samples are already convinced that the magnetic pole reversed and are therefore an unreliable link in the chain. Also, Butler admits in his book that pole reversal is very uncertain, and it seems that science is not very critical to itself and its own ideas. The whole myth of magnetic pole reversals might even be caused by the six variables I mentioned before. But it has become fixed in people's brains as facts. We reject dogmatic trust in many of the claims because of the amount of uncertainties in the data sets. We think there is a possibility that the Earth's magnetic field reversed many times before the Earth started to expand because we think that at that time, the magnetic field started to become alive, so to speak. During this process of starting up, the magnetic field could have been instable and could have been reversed many times. But after it went strong, so to speak, it didn't reverse anymore. And this reversal pattern at the start could have left many traces in the paleomagnetizable rock. Well, we have proven with our groundbreaking method that the North Pole has migrated in five steps over the last 440,000 years, due to major expansions. Geology stubbornly denies that these events ever took place, but instead they firmly believe that unprovable and invisible events took place, because in some way invisible, unobservable events have less consequences for the safe paradigm. What does this tell us about the dubious probability of magnetic pole reversals, then that this event is, according to them, long overdue? Couldn't this be a strong signal that this event might not be what it is believed to be? Geology does not know which mechanism causes the magnetic field to reverse, but geology neither knows which mechanism could cause the Earth to grow. As well, they do not know what exact mechanism causes the magnetic field of the Earth. There are more uncertainties than certainties, but invisible events are often preferred above more raw physical events like an expanding Earth. And that might be because invisible events leave more space for speculations, endless theories, research, fundings, careers, and all sorts of fantasies hidden behind a veil of incomprehensible, scientific-sounding gibberish. After all, scientists are just human beings, albeit with big egos. It is generally believed that the magnetic field reverses every now and then, and that with this flipping over all sorts of catastrophic events occur. It is also unknown what would cause such an event. Extinction events are often associated to this magnetic field flip. And of course, we agree with the idea that if the magnetic field is capable of flipping, it could have catastrophic consequences. However, there is presently no predictive science that can tell us why the Earth 
magnetic field varies, let alone what causes it to flip. In fact, we know very little, close to nothing. There are no experiments that can support the lofty theories, there are no tests yet possible, and so it all remains just nebulous conjecture. That makes all academic claims quite tricky, especially when they are presented as facts. But we say that expansion is the cause of the now known extinction events, and that expansion could be the main cause of the alleged make-believe magnetic field reversals. According to our theory, the magnetic field has never reversed, otherwise we would see a ring of expansion around the North Pole. And this is not the case. So we say with confidence that the magnetic field has never flipped over, at least not after the Earth started to expand. The Earth expands with the South Pole as the eye of the storm, and because it expands, it has misled science to believe it was the magnetic field that flipped over. No, the cause was, and still is, an expanding Earth. There are whole communities busy to prepare for an alleged upcoming pole flip. It has become a revenue model, and many people have been addicted to the tension between fear and survival. Some believe that the event is short and bursty, and so heartedly prepping would be the ultimate solution to survive the catastrophe. The catastrophes that shape the face of the Earth are long, lasting and massive, and therefore it is futile and a waste of energy and resources to prep for this event. We believe that it is better to live a happy life, try to be a better human every day, and to live without any sort of fear while doing some service to humanity. I hope wholeheartedly you enjoyed this video and will return to this topic in the future if we have additional evidence for our claims. Thank you for watching.